HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. I have pen fed, that's a fact. I have pen fed, that's a fact. My credit card purchases get me cash back. My credit card purchases get me cash back. No one else gets these rewards. Sergeant, that is just plain untrue. What in tarnation? Sir, PenFed's Power Cash Rewards Card isn't just for military members. Anyone can get cash back on all purchases. Ah, friggins! You've ruined my favorite song. PenFed Credit Union. Visit penfed.org slash powercash. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast has been enjoying inclusion on a number of lists of the best podcasts to listen to, from Inc.com to MSNBC's Your Business to uh, Proven, uh, Fit Small Business, um, People First. I mean, it just the list goes on and on and on. It just you know keeps happening, and we're really excited about that. Uh, these are organizations that are recognizing this podcast is a great resource for small businesses, entrepreneurs, sales professionals, um, and, and I'm thrilled. I also know uh, that it is really due in large part to the guests who come on. I have been fortunate over the years to talk to some really outstanding folks who bring their expertise and their time and have a conversation with me so that you can do better things in your business so that you can learn a little something, know you're not alone, whatever it is. I am especially pleased today that I have the opportunity to speak to someone again who uh, was on this podcast once before and was a wonderful guest, and that is Craig Cody. Craig is a certified tax coach, certified public accountant, business owner, and former New York City police officer with 17 years of experience on the force. In addition to being a certified public accountant for the past 15 years, he is also 
a certified tax coach. As such, CRED belongs to a select group of tax practitioners throughout the country who undergo extensive training and continued education on various tax planning techniques and strategies to become, as well as remain, certified. With this organization, Craig has co-authored an Amazon bestseller book, Secrets of a Tax-Free Life. Thanks for coming back on, Craig. Thank you very much for having me. Well, I'm, I'm thrilled. You know, taxes is not necessarily people's favorite subject, but it is an important subject, and you're so great about how you share this stuff that it, it, people are, you know, just going to love getting all the information that you are going to share with us today. Well, saving taxes gets me excited. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And it should get all of us excited, right? So, That's right. Keep more of what yeah. you make. Exactly. So let's talk about the types of tax write-offs that business owners should be looking at. Well, they, they should be looking at basically... Anything that they do in relation to the business that's going to be generating revenue, they should be carefully looking at to make sure that it is an actual deduction and that they're not overlooking anything. And the best way to do this is to be communicating with your CPA or accountant on a regular basis. Because face it, you know, if you're in business, you, you should really be making your money doing what your business does. And there are certain things that, you know, are probably less of value things that you can outsource to somebody. And the accounting is probably something that you should not be doing for a lot of different reasons. So if you communicate with your CPA, you know, you'll, you'll both figure out what you should be deducting and what you should not be deducting. Okay. I think that that is great advice because it feels like this stuff changes so often that it would be a full-time job just trying to keep up with what's allowed, what isn't allowed, what's new, what's gone. Exactly. I, in my office, I have a bone saw. So if I wanted to do an amputation, I probably could. Would I do it right? No. Okay. So just because you can do it and just because you could buy it on Amazon doesn't make it a good idea. Well, that is for sure. And I'm not even going to ask you why you would have that. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about red flags because I think this is something that really trips people up. Um, you know, it, they don't want to do things that are going to cause red flags, but they're not really sure what those things are. So what what do we do to make sure we're not, you know, sending flares to the IRS that we want to be audited? Well, his thing, nobody wants to be audited, right? Yeah. So w what you should do is you should document what you're doing when you're writing something off. You should obviously document, you know, that it is a business expense. But you should not be scared to take a deduction if it's a legitimate deduction and you've documented it just because you're worried that the IRS is going to audit you. That being okay. said, if, if you make $20,000 a year and you say you're donating $15,000 a year, that's probably a red flag. But most people, yeah. when they think of red flags, they're not thinking about stuff like that. They're thinking about, oh, my God, I can't take a home office deduction because it's a red flag. Because they read that, I don't know where, many, many years ago. So right. if, if, you, if you do it and it is a business expense and you document it, that it is a business expense, communicate with your, your accountant and don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Because most people aren't doing those glaring things, okay, that are, you know, are going to jump out and provoke an audit. Right. But let me ask you a question about, you know, having a home office. Um, is it that you actually have to have an office in your yes. home? So that's okay. what you need to have is you have to use, have a space that's not used for anything else, but um, a, a principal activity of your business. So that activity can be answering emails. It can be paying bills. It can be making phone calls and you have to spend about 15 hours a week doing that out of your home office. So most business owners that I know, spend more than that working from home. Yeah. So yeah. They, they probably spend an average of two hours a morning, most people just answering emails and doing different things. So as long as you document it and you use that space for nothing else, you're okay. Now, okay, if, so it couldn't be your dining room table. Exactly, and it's not okay. little Johnny's bedroom. Okay? Right. 
It's got to be a space that you don't use for anything else. Okay. Okay. Thanks for that. And, and I, then, I did, yeah, that really that, trips people up. Yeah, and that opens up a lot of opportunities. Uh, in the past, it opened up the opportunity for a home athletic facility, which is gone. Um, as of the new tax bill, that's out the window. But um, which was interesting, you could have a pool, which was your home athletic facility, and it was totally legitimate, <laughs> or your home gym. So um, for some reason, the government decided to do away with that. Uh, but that's huh. okay. They gave, they gave us some, they, they also gave us some other things. So that's good. Um, but, you know, then you, let's just say your office is 5% of your home. Then you get okay. to deduct 5% of your home interest, 5% of your real estate taxes, 5% of utilities, your repairs, your maintenance and stuff like that, which may not be a big number, but it also opens up the opportunity for now what was once a commute is no longer a commute. It's one location to another location. Right. Also under the new tax bill with the limitations on um, real estate taxes and state income taxes, deductibility, you know, you may now move some of those taxes to, you know, the business expense side mm-hmm. where you were going to lose them. And like I said, that's not something that's going to save somebody $20,000 a year in taxes, but it might be a start. Right. Right. Okay. Let, let, you mentioned, um, interest on mortgage, right? Is, is that what you said? Correct. Okay. Okay. So talk to me some about interest on all kinds of loans. Right. Can you, can you write it all off or? No. So let, let, we have personal interest and which is non-deductible. Then we have our home mortgage interest, which is deductible. And it used to be up to a hundred thousand, a million dollars of, uh, initial what they call indebtedness and then another hundred thousand dollars um from your home equity loan but they kind of did away with that so now they've said it's 700 for new loans for mortgages it's seven hundred fifty thousand dollars is the uh limitation home equity loans are, are now no longer part of it but you know what the bank calls a home equity loan and what the IRS calls considers home equity are two different things. So if you take out a second mortgage, which the bank calls a home equity loan, and you use those funds to um, rehabilitate or substantially improve your home, the IRS considers that initial indebtedness, and it is deductible up until the point you hit $750,000 of mortgage. Okay. On the business side, there was a lot of talk about you know interest not being deductible anymore, which is true. But it's mostly affects super large companies. So the typical small business is not going to be affected. They're going to be able to operate and deduct the interest expenses that they have associated with different various business loans. So for the most part, people will not be affected by that unless they're a super big corporation. And all they need to do is communicate with their CPA and they can figure it out. Okay. Um, you said a second ago or a minute ago about um, new mortgage loans. Does that include refinancing or not? Uh, uh, we haven't seen, at least I have not seen the revenue procedures related to that, but yes, that's what we believe it's if it's a new mortgage and it's okay. refinanced, but um, that's something that I haven't seen the final regulations be published by the IRS. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. So if that so, comes up, I would definitely communicate with your CPA to make sure. Okay. Um, now you, you said before about, you know, just making sure that you document it. So what are the kinds of documentation that, that a business owner needs to be able to provide? Well, let's talk about the home office. Um, okay. How about pictures of the space? And then how often are you using it? Are, are you, I mean, it's easy to log into, you know, the internet from your home. So that's documented in itself that you're doing work from home. Uh, if, if you're doing, you know, let's just say um, a leasehold improvements you want to show on, on your office or maybe your principal other place of business, you want to make sure that you're, you're documenting what you're doing there. If you're spending money on marketing, obviously you want to have your invoices to document that and the payments, whether it's credit card or a check. So, those are, that's like normal course of 
the day for a business owner. Take those receipts. If you don't have a bookkeeper, create a big envelope and stick them in there. Okay. Okay. That's great. And, and okay. you need to keep books and records, which means somebody needs to be doing the bookkeeping. Yeah. Yeah. And they should be doing that throughout the year. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Number one, it's a great way to run your business. So you can compare what you're doing month to month and year to year. Exactly. Yeah. Like I keep stuff by month because otherwise it's just a whole bunch of stuff. You know? Right. So and, I, and, and, I keep and ultimately, if, if you're talking about documentation, yeah, that's great. Some people can't do that. They stick it in an envelope. But as long as they're writing their bills and they're keeping their books updated on a regular basis, like monthly, that gives them a lot of insight to what's going on in their business because they may think they're doing great. And it turns right. out they're not doing as good as they thought. Maybe there's a lot of cash coming in, but they have a lot of expenses that they haven't paid yet. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It really does give you that picture of, of really where you are. It's the, the old saying, knowledge is power. Yeah. Right. And you don't want to get three quarters of the way through the year and discover that you're nowhere near where you thought you wanted to be or were going to be. And now it's sort of late in the day. Exactly. And if you have goals and whether they're revenue goals or net income goals or whatever those goals are, if you're tracking your business income and expenses, that'll, you know, give you a better idea of where you are compared to where your goals are. Yep, exactly. Okay. Thanks for saying that. Cause I, I really believe in this like 30 day monitoring thing. Yes. Oh, yeah, most, it, most it, definitely. It, yeah. Great. Great. Thanks for that confirmation. Um, I do have a question for you that I, I should have asked you before. Um, your book secrets of a tax free life. Is it on audible? No, it's not on audible. Um, this was, you know, I co-authored this a couple of years ago with nine other people. So mm -hmm. it, it is on Amazon. I don't believe it's on audible. I have to check that out. Um, I've moved on. I've come up with two books since then. So ah. uh, and one of them I will be actually offering your listeners for free. They could go to um, our website and get that wow. for free. Um, okay. So, and uh, the most recent one is actually updated for the new tax changes. So uh, that's really interesting. Wow. Man, you know, pretty hard on that. <laughs> and I just want to, you know, talk about the new tax bill. And I know we've heard so many different yeah. things about the, you know, and as it pertains to business owners, this new pass through deduction, section 199, which is a 20% deduction on their pass through income, is huge. And everybody should be communicating with their CPA to make sure that they're doing everything they need to do to take full benefit of that for 2018. Okay. What, what would, so what are some things that would be, we should be looking at to take full advantage of that? Well, the different okay. types of businesses are phased out depending on what their income level is. So you want to make sure if you're one of those phased out types of businesses, you're doing the right planning. So you don't get phased out. Okay. There are wage limitations that you have to overcome. So you want to make sure you overcome those wage limitations. Okay. So those are the two big things. Um, and then there's some real estate information on there for, for real estate investors. But the, the two big things are, am I one of those people that was kind of um, classed out almost under this section 199 that I have to be really careful, see where my net income is going to be and see where my taxable income is going to be. Or am I also making sure that I do all the things I need to do so when I qualify, I get the full benefit? Okay. Okay. Ugh. So, uh. I mean, <laughs> honestly, it, uh, but you know what? Get on the phone with your accountant. Talk yeah. to them. Make sure you're doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is for, for this year. Well, not, this is not for, for the taxes we're doing right Correct. Or is it for 2000? Okay. All right. 2018. 2018. Yeah, okay. Okay, great. So, yeah. so we have an opportunity to be talking with our CPA, making sure that through the year we're doing the things we need to do. You should be starting that now and talking with okay. him or her throughout the year. Okay. Look at, I tell people, look at it as, don't look at your accounting bill as an expense item. Look at it as an income item. If, you, if you're working with the right person and you're communicating with them, they could actually save you a lot more money than they're costing you. Yeah, right. 
Okay. That's great advice. Okay. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break, and then I got some more questions for you. Great. Um, Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. If you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash business growth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are The Go-Giver by Bob Berg and Startup Leadership by Derek Leto. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're talking with Craig Cody about the new tax law and the kinds of things you can write off as a business owner. So are, are there other things that we need to know now about the new tax law? Well, th- there's been some changes. You know, um, th- there's also some changes that the IRS hasn't fully explained yet, so we're still kind of you know rubbing our eyes a little bit about it as far as this uh, – you know, entertainment is no longer deductible. Um, the jury is out whether meals are actually deductible, how they have to be taken in order to be deductible. So there's a lot of things we're still waiting for the IRS to kind of come out with some guidance on, you know, but they made the tax laws much simpler. We all have to remember that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I kind of can't call it the full employment act. <laughs> For CPAs. <laughs> for, I think for anybody in, in that whole industry, because there's just, whether it's legal or whatever, there's going to be so much uh, litigation and, you know, IRS, you know, gobbledygook going on to, to figure out what they actually meant by some of this stuff. So, um, but, you know, the biggest thing is talk to your, your accountant, your CPA, yeah. and, and really use them as, you know, a valuable member of your team. Yeah, because I could have sworn they said you were going to be able to pay your taxes by with a postcard. Yeah, yeah, that too, that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and then there was the whole real estate thing with real estate taxes being capped, and you know everybody was telling you, okay, go pay your twenty eighteen yeah, right. taxes now, and right. you know there was a line down the block where we are for to pay oh. taxes, and it was freezing out, and I felt bad for these people because really they're not going to deduct them if they weren't, if they weren't actually on the books, you're not going to deduct them. So there's right. a lot of stuff out there. Um, yeah. You know, it's just um, a lot of changes. And if you're a business owner, you need to make sure you're really working with your CPA or accountant on a regular basis. Yeah. Okay. So I, I have a couple of specific questions th- that I, I would am curious about. And one of them is, mileage, um, but not just mileage. I'm curious about if, if you think one is better than the other, doing mileage or doing gas and maintenance. So, so you have actual versus the mileage expense. And the way that works is if, if you're driving that BMW and you choose to use mileage, you have to use mileage until you get rid of that BMW. So you can't okay. switch from year to year. That's a big thing. Okay. Uh, and then you, you just kind of that first year, you kind of have to look at see what, what's it costing you and what makes the most sense. Because if you do, if you use mileage, you don't get to depreciate your vehicle. So, okay, you know, depending right. on the vehicle you have and, you know, we uh, tend to see for most of our business clients, actual works a lot better for them than, than the mileage rate. Okay. So you have to kind of look at that, but, um, more often than not, we see it's take the actual expense, track your expenses. If you're tracking your expenses, you know, you'll be okay typically because when people don't track their expenses, they typically yeah. at the end of the year, they don't recapture all their expenses. They can't find them all. Right. So they wind up right. losing out. So, yeah, exactly. So, right. And, and if you take okay. actual, then if you have a lease vehicle and you're using it 80% of the time for business, you get to write off that 80% of the time. So typically nice. okay. that will work out in your favor. Okay. Okay. D- does, d- is there like a tipping point with how much you drive? 
you well, know obviously, I mean? if you Where, do no, if you do no driving, you know the actual is the going to far exceed the mileage yeah. rate because you have no miles yeah. to multiply by about fifty-five cents a mile. But um, it, it just when you fig, figure in the cost of gas, the depreciation of the vehicle, or the lease cost, and stuff like that, and any kind of repairs, yeah. you know, and then you remember you're locked in once you choose that that system you're going to use. You have to use that for the whole time you have that vehicle. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this may sound like a strange question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. If you sell your vehicle in June and you get a new vehicle, then you can change, like for the old vehicle, you still do it the old way, but you could say for the new one, I want to Correct. do it differently? Yes, okay. exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay. It's based on that vehicle. Okay. Are there um, office expenses that you can write off? Yeah. I mean, as long as they're legitimate expenses that you use in your business and that you're, you're paying for them, yes. So whether it's your okay. internet, your, your software costs, your computer costs, your stationary costs, you know, your rent. Okay. If you have an office, your office rent. Okay. The cleaning costs. The okay. Any other supplies. Huh. They, they, trust me, they add up. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, and I'm sure people aren't thinking about it. Okay, then let's talk about charitable donations because so, like, I'll use myself as an example. I, I'm a I'm a small business owner, one person band. Um, most of my contributions I make as just a person, but I do make some contributions as a business. So, uh, are those? You know, can I write yes. those off as a yes. business? Yes, yes, you can write them off. Um, typically, the, there's a couple of different ways to do it, but the way we typically do it with our clients, and these are clients that are passed through entities, so they're single member LLCs, LLCs, and S corporations. If if they write, let's just say a check to United Way uh, out of their corporation, we'll consider that not an expense of the corporation, but a distribution of profits. And then they'll take that deduction on their personal return. Oh, okay. Versus deducting it on their business return. And then it, it, it comes out to the same. It works out the same, but we yeah. just like to put it through distribution. So we're, it's easier for us to track everything. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. Um, and then, and then what about for, for people who are service providers when they donate their time, they donate their service? So, for example, if normally someone would get paid to do workshops, but they decide to do them for free for like a nonprofit um, or like an SBDC or something, um, is that in kind? Uh, like, no, where does that fall? you really don't get a deduction for that. All right. Okay. So if you think of it this way, if you picked up the income for it, then you would get the deduction for it, uh, but you're not, you're not picking up any income. So it's, it's, you know, your time is, you're not able to put a dollar amount on your time. Okay. Okay. And that's, Got that's a, a fairly frequent question that we come across. Yeah, I, I would think. Because a lot of these places make you fill out a form saying you donated your time. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Not sure what they do with that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's the government. Who knows what they're doing with that, right? They're wallpapering a room yeah. with that. Um, okay. So what's the strangest write-off you've ever seen someone try? Uh, I, I've seen some funky ones. Um, there was one... Um, this one I didn't specifically see, but it's in my first book. There was a New York attorney who claimed the $65,000 um, prostitution services as a medical expense. Uh, it didn't work. I was just going to ask. Okay. It didn't work. So. Oh, uh, my goodness. Yeah. People are creative. Yeah, people, that, okay. listen, when it comes to taxes, people get very creative. Very they creative. They really do. But they probably shouldn't. No, you, you could be creative and do things the legal way and by looking for things that are legitimate that you're able to do. 
Um, yeah. But when you get into this, I won't even call it a gray area. It's like a, the land of uh, make believe. <laughs> you know. So if someone, ha- this may also sound like a strange question, but if, if someone um, is listening to this, you know, gets your book and goes to their CPA and says, okay, you know, we need to be looking at these sorts of deductions. And their CPA says, no, I don't think you, you should be looking at that. Is, is that like time to find a new CPA? That's time to hit the pavement and find another CPA. Okay. All right. All right. I thought so. Cause I think a lot of CPAs are like uber conservative when it comes to, small business and taxes and, and you know, what you can write off and what you can't, what you should and shouldn't. And right. It's, it's, you know, unfortunately most CPAs that while they do a very good job of putting the right numbers in the right boxes, they're not actually looking for ways to actually save you some money, keep more of what you make. So I consider myself conservative, but if the code says you can do it, why shouldn't I do it? Right. You know, Aggressive is the yeah. code says you could, you know, wear pink and you say, well, I'm going to wear purple because it's kind of like pink. That's, you know, I don't agree with that. Yeah. But if the code says you could do it, do it. Document yeah. what you're doing. You know, and, you know, if Warren Buffett could do it, Donald Trump can do it, you know, Bill Gates can do it. Why can't you do it? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's key what you said, you know, document it, right? right. Don't yeah. do it. And then if in, in the event you do get audited, then you're scrambling because right. yeah. When, when we do, we do tax planning with a client, we make sure everything gets documented because yeah. you know, a year or two down the road, if they get a notice or whatever it is, you know, you want to remember what you did and you want to have the document in place. It's a lot easier to have it in place and say, okay, here it is. than have to go around and figure out how to recreate it. Exactly. Right. And how long do you have to keep, business and tax information? Oh, we, we tell people seven years from the date of filing, right? Okay. The IRS can come back and audit you within three years of the date of filing. Okay. But, you know, especially now most things are, you know, paper is a thing of the past. Right. It's easy to store. So we tell people seven, we keep records for seven years. Okay. Okay. That's great. And if, if you don't file the, the, the statute doesn't start. So, um, just because, you know, 2010 came and gone and you didn't file, you better hold on to that stuff because you didn't file. That's so great. It's uh, <laughs> a very good point that I think a lot of people probably are overlooking. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Is there, so, so is there any like parting wisdom you, you want to, that's anything we didn't talk about that we should have talked about? Well, I, I think the thing that, um, is key is planning, taking the time to plan is so important. You know, we, if you want to save money, you have to plan, you know, when you're looking for a car, you do all the research to see what the prices are and stuff like that. You know, people aren't taking that time to plan for their taxes and it, for a lot of people, it's their biggest expense. Yeah. So take the time, plan, communicate with your CPA, make sure him or her are going to communicate back with you. And that'll allow you really to keep more of what you make and, you know, over time, it turns into a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So true. Wow. This is so great. I, I always appreciate when you come on because <laughs> it, it's such great information, and I'm not sure everyone is getting it from their CPA. And so, you know, it just bears having the conversation because we, as business owners, You know, the book really stops with us, not with our CPA. We need to know this stuff. Exactly. And you know what? We work hard. We put in a lot of hours. Yeah. And we take a lot of risk, you know, as far as, you know, instead of getting that nine to five and that paycheck every two weeks, we're out there making it ourselves. And, you know, if the government says you're allowed to do it, you should do it and document it. And, you know, make sure you're communicating with with whoever you are um, and, start the process. You know, the doctor doesn't call you up and say, how are you feeling today? So get in touch with your CPA and say, you know what? I really want to talk about planning and what we can do to save more. Yeah, that's a great point. Be proactive with it. Yes. yes. That, that is a great point. Okay. Yeah. And, and in, in parting, I would like to offer your listeners a, a copy of my most recent book, The 10 that Most Expensive so awesome. Tax Mistakes. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, right. And um, we'll, we'll give you a link, but it's craigcodingcompany.com forward slash um, AYBG. So accelerate your business growth initials. That's so great. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we are offline, I'll make sure I have the link and I can put it on the show page. And, and that is so great of you. Thank you. I, well, I appreciate you coming on and sharing and offering the book is just a wonderful gift. Well, thank you very much for having me. Oh my gosh. Always my pleasure. And I like to thank the listeners because that's who we're doing yes. this for. And, and hopefully right? it spurs some conversation between the listeners and their accountants. Exactly. Right. And then I'll be getting phone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> phone calls are like, okay, well, who are you having on? Right. Uh, and our sponsor, audible.com. Get a free trial and a free audio book by going to audibletrial.com slash business growth. Continue to prosper and be curious and be proactive in your tax planning. Don't wait for your CPA to call you. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Are you tired of the same old productivity hacks? Have you read the top 20 books on effectiveness and yet your work days and email inbox still causing anxiety, burnout, and even depression? Ready to learn the latest in brain-based modalities, techniques, and technologies to optimize your success and well-being? Welcome to the Focus to Evolve podcast, where we'll illuminate your path to spacious productivity and balanced thriving. Each week, we dive into deeply insightful and immediately impactful methods to help you become highly effective while promoting health, profitability, and well-being. Say goodbye to the trance of busyness and hello to your highest potential. It's time to discover a new way of accelerating your mission, growth, and purpose. Join us on the Focus to Evolve podcast and get ready to live your most joyful, productive, and fulfilling life.